back to another episode of The Raw Show with Michael McDonald and a very special guest. We have Liam Britton joining me today. Liam, thanks for being a guest on the show. Hey, Michael. Thank you for so much for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here, so thanks for inviting me. Liam's an ex-multiple figure fitness studio owner based in Herefordshire, which is in the UK. He's a big Arsenal fan, chicken lover, and enjoys spending time with his beautiful partner, Sam. Steps on Harry and Scruff the Dark. Okay, I need, I need to, before we dive into something else, I need to know, where, where does the love of chickens come from? Um, it started with my partner, Samantha, actually. When I moved in with her, she had uh, four chickens and slowly but surely I took over and uh, I began to really enjoy it and I at first I was like they're just you know they're just chickens right but then I started getting involved and started to really enjoy it and we have about 25 now so and we're actually hatching some that are due tomorrow so tomorrow I could have a lot more <laughs> oh wow all right, awesome. Well, Liam also spends his time now helping other people that want to run their own fitness businesses, take them to the next level. So would you be able to share a bit of your background for us, Liam? So where you were born and what it was like for you growing up? So I was, I was born in Suffolk, um, United Kingdom, um, a little place called Bury St. Edmunds. Um, was the nearest hospitals where I was born, but I grew up in a place called Sudbury. Um, which is a small town in Suffolk and um, you know normal normal childhood you know went through school um, you know didn't particularly uh, enjoy school as much you know I can remember people saying to me you know your school days are your best years right and I'm like no they're not <laughs> they're definitely <laughs> not gonna be my best days because I hate school and uh, I, I never I never believed that and I still don't to this day um so yeah normal normal childhood i you know i'm a little bit about me i'm six foot five i've always been tall um so at school i stuck out like a sore thumb um i did lack a lot of confidence um you know i had braces i had acne you name it i had it you know it just didn't do well for my self-esteem um and uh a little bit of bullying, not much, but there was a bit of bullying. I think I was, you know, because I was self-conscious and didn't have much confidence. I found it hard sticking up for myself and being so tall. I was just an easy target. Um, so, so yeah, I uh, went through school, got average GCSEs, you know, C grades, got one A, which was in PE, because that was the only thing I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, and then that led me on to go to college. And I did a sports science diploma and to, to, to cut right to chase, like I loved college. It was amazing. It just, because they, they, they treat you like adults at school. They treat you like children at college. They treat you like an adult. And I just, I just loved it. Fell in love with it straight away. And I've got to do like sports science all the time. And um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't know if you've got any other questions about my childhood that you want to go into. But that, that's the that's the crux of it. I mean, the um, I'm, I'm curious to know how you you got into the the fitness side yourself. So now you help others with their own businesses. But how did you get started? So it does kind of relate back to the confidence, <clears throat> which for a lot of PTs, it's it they've got similar stories. I was definitely one of them. So growing up, you know, I was very tall, but also I was very slim, uh, skinny. You know, I used to get called lanky a lot um mm -hmm. i actually had someone call me lanky the other day and i haven't had that for years and i just laugh <laughs> it was hilarious um so uh my cousin uh was really into lifting weights and he you know he was very muscular and he looked really good and i started asking questions and he was like i'll show you so he started showing me some simple exercises that i could do at home so i bought myself some really cheap dumbbells this is like 16 years old and started lifting weights and i realized that wow you can change your body this is amazing right uh, before then i didn't realize that you could right i know it sounds strange but i didn't know you could do it and then i started lifting and i started seeing results and i was like this is this is great so you know i immersed myself in it and i was reading online i was getting magazines you know i wanted to find out which were the best routines excuse me what were the best routines, um, you know, um, 
what what should I be eating? And, you know, I really got into it and, um, you know, I completely changed my body shape. And I can remember like, um, the year I went to college, obviously I didn't see my school friends and stuff. So I was away at college and then I'd come back from the summer and I could just remember like speaking to old school friends like, Oh my God, Liam, like <laughs> you look completely different. Right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it, it, that's how I felt it. That's, you know, it just gave me tons of confidence, made me feel better about myself, you know, and um, yeah, I just, I fell in love with it. And I thought, because I changed my own body and I realized how much confidence it gave me, I wanted to then serve that to other people. So when I was at college, I got, I got the opportunity to do my level two fitness instructor qualification, um, which was only a 50 pounds. So I thought, well, why not? Let's do it. So I did it and I, I passed that over a summer and did that with YMCA Cambridge. Um, and that kind of led me to get my first part-time job in the gym. And that's how I got into the, got into industry. All right. So was it something that you, you were always passionate about? Cause you, you mentioned the, the only thing that you really got a good grade in was PE because you enjoyed it and you did sport through, throughout your life as well. Did, did you play sport as well? Or was it just exercise when you realized you could change your body? I am a massive football fan, um, played football since I was six, seven, eight years old. Uh, it was almost my dream to be a professional footballer. That's what I wanted to do. Didn't quite make the grade. You know, I played semi-professional, um, but, you know, I'm a big Arsenal fan and uh, played football. So, um, yeah, that that's where the love of sport came from. You know, I, I played various sports, played a lot, of, being so tall, played basketball as well at school. <laughs> um and uh you know other stuff but um football was my main focus and um yeah that that's that's where the love of sport came in and and competing i still play to this day you know i'm 31 and i still play ah oh, cool so what was the the first sort of 12 months like as a gym instructor and and, and building your way into being a personal trainer and, and when, when did things start to really kick off for you so I, at 18 years old, I, I actually, after doing my diploma at college, I went, I started a degree in sport health and exercise and I completed a year and I decided that I didn't want to do it anymore. I just got to a point where I'd learned and I felt like I'd learned enough and I was just like, I'd had enough of education basically. And I wanted to get out there. And I wanted to start earning a bit of money and I wanted to start teaching fitness, health, right? So I got a job literally next to the college as a sports center. And uh, luckily they were, they were looking for a full-time fitness instructor. So I applied for that and um, got the job, which was great. Really excited. Uh, now full-time fitness instructor and um, started working there. And I worked there for about two years and any advice that I'd give to any ex inspiring personal trainer is like go and do some time as a fitness instructor because it's paid work because it, you know when you go when you become PT you've got a lot to think about but also you're going to be self-employed right which is which is tough on its own right so under you know it gave me time to understand the industry understand working with clients find out you know working with different people and it really gave me a, a good foothold in, in the industry to really understand how to kind of, you know, deal with people and help people, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So did you get, get to a point when maybe you wanted more than just working with one-to-one -one clients and did you then scale up? I mean, what was that journey like? Yeah. So there was something that happened in my life, which I'll share with the, with the audience that really kind of changed, not just from, my work life, but my, my personal life, my whole life is that, um, in October, 2008, uh, I lost my dad to a motorcycle accident. And, uh, you, as you can imagine, it hit me like a ton of bricks Hit my family, like a ton of bricks. And it was, you know, it was, it, it, it woke me up, right. It woke me up to think, wow, like your life can be taken away that quickly. And, you've only got one life and you know, you need to do something with it. You know, before, before my, my dad had his crash, I was an average 
guy just did enough you know i just did enough for school just did enough at college you know i you know i'd go to work you know watch the clock you know and go home that's who i was when 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 my dad has crashed that's everything just something switched in me and i'm like okay i I can't mess around anymore right i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna build i want to build a business i want i want to be successful i want to be a son that my dad would be proud of and it was then that i made decision that i was going to be self go self-employed and be a self-employed personal trainer and because i wanted to build something on on my own and right from the very off it the the dream was to have not only a, a successful fitness business but a successful fitness business that can run without me it didn't need me there all of the time um you know most PTs, you know, they just do one-to-one sessions and, and, and that's it. But I wanted more than that. Right? I wanted my own fitness studio. I wanted to have employees. I want to have all that stuff. So the first step was to be self-employed personal trainer. And, um, yeah, that, that's, that's, <clears throat> that's when things started to really kind of take off, if you like. Yeah, I, I kind of imagine that that being the case, Liam. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's not easy. Thanks for sharing that Liam it's uh yeah it's not something that a lot of people do tend to like sharing or, or, or do tend to to do well with I mean you you seem to have turned it into a positive as opposed to a negative I mean why, why do you think that is that's a great question I think when something like that happens in your life it can send you down two roads can't it and um I I, I really think that it, it just put me on it it just I felt like I was shook you know, life shook me up and I like opened my eyes for the first time to realize like, I don't just want to go through my life like most people do. You know, I want to do something different. I want to make an impact. I want to, you know, help people want to create something special. I want to leave my mark. <clears throat> and I, 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 I can't really put my finger on as to why I went down that road. Um, but I'm thankful for it, you know, <laughs> so because I know for a lot of people it's the complete opposite, you know, so yeah, I can't really answer that in a way, but I was just lucky that I, I, I turned it into something positive. Yeah, I, I suppose it's, um, it's something that we all try to do, isn't it? We all want to try and take something positive away from it. We all want to to feel like we can do something about it or, you know, just change to to feel like we were doing something that's I guess more meaningful than the than the way things are like we always have like these these moments when we start asking ourselves certain questions and we question everything and we wonder if it's if it's worth going down the same path or, or then whether we'd change it so what was the what were the first steps for you I mean did did you ask yourself any particular questions did you take things to um a, a, a different place, I guess, is the only way I can explain it. Did how, how did you actually go about making the decision to start your own business? Okay, there was a turning point. These are great questions, by the way. This there was a turning point where I was working as a fitness instructor, and you know, obviously, my dad had his crash, and I started to want more. Right, want more for my life. I wanted to progress. I wanted to be better. And the first thing I did actually was apply for the assistant manager's job at a, another gym, which was in the same chain uh, in in another town. And I applied to be an assistant manager. So I go from fitness instructor to assistant manager. I didn't get the job for whatever reason, right? And they saw someone else fit. And then the route, the next, I was, I, obviously I was still looking. Right? I was like, well, what do I do now? Because I'll, I'll be honest, I thought I was going to get the job, but I didn't. Um, and I thought, okay, what do I do? And then luckily, uh, a personal training company came into the gym and started operating their personal trainers in the gym. And I was like, that's it. This is, this is clearly meant to be for me, right? This, this is what I want to do. Um, and, and, and I just saw it as the next step forward for me. And um, I just, you know, I spoke to the personal trainer manager and I was like, yeah, I want, I want to do this. And uh, I'm so glad that I did. There's been lots of ups and downs between 
then and now, which I'll share, I'm sure. But yeah, it, it was just progression. I wanted growth, right? Tony Robbins talked about growth being an important key in your life. And that's what I wanted. I was eager for growth. So what, what were the next steps then? So you wanted to, to start your own business. You decided to, to take the plunge. The, the guy that you spoke to, the PT manager, seemed okay for you to get started maybe. What were the, uh, the next steps for you to actually launch the business and say, okay, I officially have my own personal training business? Well, yeah, of course, this is going back a while now. So this is like 2009, 2010. Um, so basically, you know, I went self-employed. I registered with HMRC that I was self-employed. Um, and I just took the steps. So, you know, I really went in blind, to be honest. I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I, you know, luckily, I did have a really great PT manager. You know, he lined me up with some leads as I walked in. You know, he gave me like 10 cars with like names and numbers on. He's like, I, I sorted these for you, which is a great help. So like booked them in for consultation. And, you know, I, you know, I realized I didn't quite know what I was getting myself into. Right. And it, it was weird going from an employed job to like, I'm, a, I'm my own boss now. I've got no one telling me what to do. I've got to self-motivate myself. Right. And that, that shift was weird in a way, but it was also, um, what's the word? Um, exciting, right? It's like really exciting. And, you know, I had to learn very quickly that, you know, the only way that you're going to get results in your business is if you put in the work. And one of the first things that I got encouraged to do was to go and speak to people on the gym floor and and start conversations and 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 that was uncomfortable that was scary and that when i started doing that i realized that you know i'm a self-employed business owner right now right and it it was a bit scary but yeah I, i i can't i can't really give you like actual steps that i took but i just i just threw myself in you know i chucked myself in the deep end i thought okay i'll just learn as i go yeah, you you seem to have seem to have, <laughs> you seem to have chucked yourself in the deep end and sink or swim, and you seem to have like swam, right? You you, yeah. you made it. You, you did. I it. didn't have a choice. I had didn't bills to pay, choice. right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Of course. You know, I, I've, I've mentioned Tony already, and another thing, you know, Tony Robbins always says you got to make it a must, right? And um, it was a must for me because I had bills to pay, and I had to make it work because I'd quit my full time job. That was it. Yeah, definitely. There's, there's, there's nothing quite like incentives either. So when things started to go really well, what, why did you decide to, to do something different? Did you leave the gym? Did you start your own studio, as you mentioned before? I mean, what, what was the, the next step after the gym? <clears throat> okay, so there, there is a, there's quite a, a few years between uh, being a self-employed PT to me opening up my studio. Right. I'll, 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 I'll give you the story so you understand it a little bit. So I was working as a one-on-one PT. I did that for about a year and I did very well. You know, I booked my diary out, lots of one-to-one sessions, you know, was making good money. But the thing was, is I was working a lot of hours. And as I was saying earlier, my goal was to have a business that can run without me. Right. And I soon realized that one-to-one PT was never, ever going to give me that. So I had to choose to do something different, right? I couldn't carry on doing that because I was always going to get the same result. So I had to choose to do something different. So what I chose to do was to leave that gym and go back to my hometown, Sudbury, and to open up a boot camp, right? Which a lot of PTs do, right? But I had it in my head that I was going to create this boot camp. You know, I'm going to have you know, lots of members and I'm going to then pay for instructors to come in and do the sessions for me. And then I'm going to have multiple locations and da, da, da. that was, that was the idea. Um, but to cut a long story short, it massively bombed. It really didn't go well. It ran for about eight months and it got to a point where I was seven weeks behind rent at home. I, I basically was undercharging massively my clients. It was like 50 pounds a month or something. 
and I had trainers working for me, but I couldn't afford to pay them. I didn't have any money for myself. I was basically living, this is the truth. I was living off uh, liver and baked beans. <laughs> that, 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 that's what I was eating every day, right? Value baked beans and, and liver, you know, obviously liver's cheap, right? Yeah. That's the only thing that kept me alive, I think. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, you know, it was that, at that point, it was really bad. I was, I was heavily overworked. I was burnt out. I was stressed. Um, you know, I was really, really, really suffering. Um, you know, I was still coaching and, you know, in that July, I, you know, the, the first venue wasn't profitable. So I thought the answer is to go and open up a second venue. Right. And that's what I did. And it was, it was again, silly mistake. Why would you go and replicate something that's not working? Right. <laughs> yeah. But that's exactly right. But this is, this, these are the lessons that I learned, which I wouldn't ever swap, you know? And, um, you know, again, this is me chucking myself in the deep end, learning as I go. And i got this one massively wrong. Um, and like I said, it got to a point where, you know, I was in a real bad place emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually in a real bad place. I was, um, like I say, seven weeks behind rent and the, the, the top off point, I think one thing, right. I'll quickly say is that, and this is a good lesson that I always think about now is that, you know, I used to listen to a lot of Les Brown. Do you know Les Brown? I do know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the motivator. Right. So I used to listen to him every day. Right. And he, he used to say, you know, it's possible and don't give up. And I still listen to Les Brown today. I think he's amazing. But, you know, in my mirror, I had like, you know, something written down and said, never give up. Right. So I'd, I was constantly pushing something that clearly wasn't working. But I thought that the magic formula was to just work hard. Right. And, and I realized it's not now. If you haven't got the right strategy and it's not going to give you the outcome, right, just working hard is never going to, never going to work. Right. Um, cause that's what I did. I pushed so hard for so long and it, it, it never, it never materialized. Um, so like I say, I was seven weeks behind rent and then the, the top off point was, you know, I'm at home sitting, I think it's like lunchtime and I'm eating my liver and value baked beans. Right. And, uh, I, the post comes through the door and I get a letter from one of the gyms where I'm doing the boot camp, saying they're taking me to small claims court. Um, and there was a bill for like two, three thousand pounds because I had of unpaid rent. And it was, you know, that to me then that looked like 250,000. Yeah. Uh, right. It just, I just thought, oh, what am I doing? This is really bad. I've, I broke down there and then, you know, and I thought, I can't do this anymore. And it was there and then that I decided that I was going to give up being an entrepreneur, give up being a business owner and I'm not doing this anymore. And, um, you know, I, I just canceled the boot camps there and then boom, done. And, um, it, it was a massive weight off my shoulders. I'll be honest. And I'm glad I did it because I, I needed, I needed a rest. And I, at that point I was done. I was done forever. I was never going back. And, um, I went and got another job and, um, I actually ended up working for LA Fitness in Colchester in Essex, um, not as a PT, obviously, but as a uh, as a membership advisor doing sales. And um, and uh, I worked there for about six or nine months, and it, I, I'll, I'll be honest, is the best thing I ever did because I got to see how biz, a big business works, how targeted they are with their numbers. And because I'm in the membership kind of zone, you know, I was learning sales and I realized that I was crap at sales, <laughs> right? And uh, before, yeah. and uh, I realized what that is where I was going wrong because I was massively undercharging. I had no real sales process and I had, I was, I was so lucky. I, I, I don't know where he is to this day, but I had a, such an amazing sales manager and I learned so much from him. And I still, I still think he is one of the best salespeople that I've ever met. And I just learned a ton from him. And basically, um, I worked there for like six months. Uh, my brother bailed me out of debt, right? I forgot to add, to add injury to insult. My little brother bailed me out of debt, oh, right? Um, so, I could, so I could pay 
the small claims court bill. Yeah. And then I worked and then paid him back over, you know, the months to, to get that money back. And I, I got to a point where I was back to zero. Um, and after six months, you know, I'd recovered. I'd got my energy back. I'd feeling a bit better. You know, I was working out again. And um, that feeling came across me again that I wanted more growth. I wanted to, you know, do more, be more, you know, do all that kind of stuff. And I then applied for a job in the, as an assistant manager at um, a place called Goal Soccer Center. They are nationwide. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I haven't, no. No, so it's like a five-a-side soccer place, oh, okay. um, and they needed an assistant manager there. So oh, I applied for that. Yeah, yeah I applied yeah. for that, got that job, and I hated it, basically. The hours were awful. I thought, because it was in football, I love football, it would be great, but no, it was awful. Um, and ba- I, I am coming to something, right? So basically I was working weekends. I, I got my energy back. I wanted to go and play football again because I love football. And I, I said to the guy, the manager, you know, my manager at work, I said, can I have my Saturdays off so I can go play football? And he, you know, said, no, no chance. Right. So literally the, the following Monday I handed in my notice. Right. Cause I was right. Cause I was thought I'm not living my life by this guy. I'm, I want to live my life my way. I'm not sure how I'm going to survive but I'll work it out, you know, chucking myself in the deep end again. Right. And it was this, it was at this time when I started receiving emails from a well-known uh, business mentor called Bedros Koulian. Um, and he was talking about small group training, how it's really effective. You know, you, you train in small groups, but you charge a little bit more. And I really like the sound of it. So I thought, you know what? I've got my energy back. You know, if I could just make enough money to play football, I'd be happy. Right. So I went to a gym back to Bury St. Edmunds uh, where I, I worked as a, as a fitness instructor in my first job, back to Bury St. Edmunds, not the same gym, different gym. And I started, um, I said, can I PT in here and do small groups? Because it was like a Muay Thai boxing gym and they had like plenty of space. And I was like, would you ha- be okay with me doing groups of four, five and six? And they're like, yeah, sure. Right. And I got free rent because I said I'd look after the gym for them on a Friday. It was a no brainer. Right. I thought I can make this work. And it, it just, I, I, I look back now, I'm not quite sure how it happened. I think it was more word of mouth, but it just kicked off and I managed to grow my groups really quickly. And, you know, I was like making two, 3000 pounds a month playing football and it was, it was working. I'd learned so much from LA fitness about the sales. I'd implemented that into my, into my business. And this time it really started to work. Right. Um, and that is when things started to really kick off for me. I know that was, that's really long answer to your question, but now you've got the background. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it really seems like you're, you're trying to, to make it work at that point. Like you're doing as, as much as you can, doing whatever you can just to, just to do the thing that you want to do, you know? So when did things start to, to feel like you were gaining a, maybe a bit of momentum with it? Maybe things started to, I, I don't want to say ease off or get easier because from the guests that I've had on, I know that very rarely happens. We always make up the slack, right? We always do more if things get easier. But um, what was it like when things started to feel like they were getting somewhere? So after about a year, I opened up my small my small group training, I managed to grow it to a point where we were doing about 5,000 a month, right? I had about 50 members, um, you know, all paying about 130, 150 pounds a month. And, uh, it was, it was going really well. And I, the gym where I was at, they were, they were putting in a mezzanine floor and we agreed for me to take over half of the space upstairs. And, uh, it was about a thousand square feet. And I said that I would take that over and it'll be exclusively my space. So that was kind of like the birth of my little studio, if you like. And, um, and, you know, putting that together, you know, I had, you know, all the, everything, you know, I put all the equipment in, like all the money that I've, I'd saved up from doing the small groups, you know, it just all come together and to go from that place where, you know, getting that small claims court seven weeks behind on rent 
to then opening up my my studio and I can remember sitting in there for the after the night that I'd finished putting it together and it was just very overwhelming it's like one of the, one of the proudest moments of my life really because I was like oh God, this is this is finally happening now I'm, I'm I'm doing it you know I'm doing it and it it was really from there that I really really started to kick things off because from there I, I knew that the, the business had huge potential because I was creating a buzz in the town. Um, you know, things were going really well. We was making good money. We were getting amazing results for people. And I thought, oh, this, this can go another level. And I always had this dream of making 10,000 in one month, right? The five figures. I know a lot of entrepreneurs are the same, right? And um, I, the, one of the best decisions I ever made was taking on a business mentor. I, I wish I'd done it sooner. But it took me a while because I think, you know, I've, looking back now, in my head, I was quite egotistical because I felt like I could do everything on my own. And uh, I soon realized the power of mentorship. Um, I invested in a, in a guy, a guy called Simon Lovell. Um, I invested £8,000. It was really scary for me at the time. Um, it was all the money I had, literally. And I thought, if this don't work, I'm going to be living off baked beans and liver again. Right. Um, but I, I threw 8,000 pounds at him and I thought, I'm just going to listen to what he says and do it. And we literally went from 5,000 and I, I, so he, he helped me set up my first Facebook ads, which I'd never done before. And he, he polished up my sales process. He, tr he made me triple my prices as well. I started selling a program at a thousand pounds and we tripled our, our income from 5,000 to 15,000 in the first four weeks. And, um, about another two or three months on, we started having 20, 25, 30,000 pound months, which was incredible. Um, even like December, which is meant to be a poor month for the fitness industry. We did 29 and a half thousand, which, you know, was, was an incredible feeling. So, you know, it, it, it was, to get that big jump, you know, I, I done okay on my own, but to get that jump, I, you know, and, and get a kind of shortcut, if you like, I just invest in someone who'd already created what I was looking to create and, and, and just action the advice. And that I got a massive result. Yeah. I think there's, there's a lot of, a lot of things to be said about the idea of just following someone's footsteps, I guess, someone that's already done it. And then, this sort of speed the process up for you. So what, what's Liam up to now? What's, uh, what's the, the deal now? What, 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 thought, what sort of things are you up to? And yeah, bring us up to date. So um, how long we got left? <laughs> Maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, okay. Because I want to share something, right? Because I think it would be really powerful for, for your listeners. <clears throat> um, and I know I've been talking a lot. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> um, so I obviously I so a lot of people are thinking, why haven't you got your fitness studio now, right? And I haven't got it anymore. You know, a lot of people say, well, if I was doing so much money and it was so good, like why haven't you got it, right? Um, here's the answer. So basically, in that December, that December I was talking about where we did 29,500, I went to a mastermind event in Thailand and with my mentor and with the other guys he coaches, it was, it was great. We had an amazing time in Thailand, went to Koh Samui. And uh, we were doing a meditation. Um, I went to that mastermind thinking, I want to learn how to get to 50,000 a month. But we, we got there and we started doing a lot of inner work and we started doing these meditations. And one of the questions that come up in the meditation was, what's your biggest fear? Now, at first, my brain was like, Liam, you haven't got any fears and you can make anything happen and you're not scared of anything and da, 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 right? But I sat with it for a little bit. And what came up for me, um, which I had to write down on a bit of paper, was I'm not sure if my dad was proud of me. That's what I wrote down. And when I started to write that, tears started coming to my eyes straight away. And I realized that I still hadn't dealt with, this is in 2014, so this is six years after my dad had his crash. 
I still realized that I hadn't dealt with it, dealt with the trauma because I was getting upset. I hadn't cried for like six years for a long time. And I didn't really talk about my dad either, but that came up and I realized I had something to sort out. And I said to my mentor, I was like, well, what do I do? How do I fix this? Like, what do I need to do? And he said, Liam, what I, what I recommend is that you come and join Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership. And I'd heard of Tony Robbins, you know, I'd watch YouTube videos and that kind of stuff, but not looked really, you know, deep into it. Um, but my mentor had got, you know, really great results being a platinum partner, uh, platinum partner. And if you don't know what being a platinum partner is, it's basically you, it's 12 months. You follow Tony around the world. You go to all these awesome places. You listen to him speak. You learn loads of stuff, right? And obviously you, you work on yourself. So I said to my mentor, I was like, how much is it? And he said, $65,000. And I was like, I was like, ah, oh, maybe next year. <laughs> um, he was like, he was like, no, I really think you should do it. I think it would massively help you. He was like, the deposit is 15,000 pounds. And then you pay 3000 pounds a month. Could you do that? And I said, Phew. I said, that'd be a massive stretch, but, I agreed to it and I, and I did it and I'll be honest, the best decision I ever made because so I put down my 15,000 was going to pay the rest over the next 12 months. Cause in my mind I was selling at a thousand pounds. So I thought that it's three extra clients a month. I'll make it work. Right. Chuck myself in the deep end again. Right. You can see a common theme happening. <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. Right. So uh, I did it. And the first event I went to was in Canada and so i flew to canada this is in the february of 2015 flew to canada and ironically was a financial event right <laughs> so oh, um goodness. yeah so but it was a platinum partners only event so only people who were paying 65,000 were there right it's about 100 150 people right really small event but the kind of people that i met millionaires like there was billionaires you know it was it was amazing Right. And I got to meet all these people and spend time with them. Um, but very luckily I was introduced to a man who was not there at the Tony Robbins event, was just visiting some friends who, who cause he's been, he'd been in the platinum partnership previously. And I got introduced to a, a guy. It was actually my mentor who introduced me to him, a guy called Anil Gupta, who is best selling author of immediate happiness. And as soon as I met him, he looked me in the eyes and I just knew he was going to help me. I don't know why. He just looked at me and I just felt like he just said, Liam, don't worry. I know you're in pain. I'm going to help you. I, I can't explain it. He, he didn't say a word to me, but that's what I felt he was saying to me. And later on that day, I didn't know anything about the guy at, at, at the time. Uh, so I started talking to him. I was like, oh, you know, I was like, so Anil, what do you do? And he goes, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an author of a book called Immediate Happiness and I like making people happy, right? And I started laughing, but I thought he was joking, right? <laughs> and I was like, I, and I was like oh, you, oh, you really do do that? And he was like, yeah. And, and then my mentor who got me there, he was like, oh, I think Anil would be a really great person for you to speak to. And Obviously, Neil knew that I was in pain anyway because he knew when he first met me. But he was like, "Okay, what's going on?" And so I started talking about my dad. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he's proud of me, and you know, like basically what happened was that at the end of my dad's life, we didn't have a very good relationship. I didn't see him, so when he died, I had a lot of resentment, a little, a lot of guilt, and a lot of shame that me and him had not had the relationship that I wanted at the end of his life, and I'd carried that. And every, at first I blamed him for it. But as time went on, I realized that I had power because I had a car and I could have driven around and spent time with him. But I then started resenting myself for that, blaming myself of guilt and shame that I didn't have that relationship with my dad and I didn't use the time while he was alive. I didn't know that at the time, but that's what I was going through and, and I was resenting myself every day for it. And so I started talking about my dad, you know, Oh, we didn't have a good relationship and I feel really bad about it. And he said, stop Liam, stop. Don't worry. We have a conversation later. 20 minutes. We'll fix it. Right. And I just laughed at him again. I was like, no, 
I was like, <laughs> I was like, Anil, I said, Anil, I've, you're telling me you can fix me in 20 minutes. I've paid $65,000 for Tony Robbins for a year to help me. And you're telling me you can fix me in 20 minutes, right? And he was like, yeah, I, I can do that. I can help you. I was like, okay. I didn't believe him, right? But let's just say the man kept his word and it happened quicker than 20 minutes, it happened in about 10, right? So basically later on that afternoon, we, we, we were, uh, we'd been skiing. We was in Whistler, right? Been skiing, having a great time, you know, come down from the slopes. And we jumped in this like jacuzzi thing and um, it was just me and Anil. And he said, come on, Anil, tell me, tell me about your dad. And I started talking and I was like, oh, I don't know if my dad loved me. I don't know if my dad was proud of me. Don't, you know, you know, we didn't have a good relationship and I feel really bad about it. And, you know, I, I got to about four sentences and he went, Liam, stop, 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 stop. And he went, he went, Liam, when are you going to forgive yourself? And when are you going to forgive your dad? And he, and he, and he, and I could feel it in me when I even say that. And he said that to me. And I just erupted with emotion, right? Like I was talking about earlier, I was carrying all that shame, that guilt, that resentment towards myself and to my dad. And he just, let, he just gave me permission to let it go. And he took me through this meditation slash affirmation thing that we did. And he just let me express all that stuff that I'd, I'd never expressed before. And just let me express my feelings, and it just all erupted out of this. And I, this is no word of a lie. I cried on and off for three days, and it was just raw emotion. I hadn't dealt with the trauma, you know. I hadn't allowed myself to to be, you know, to be, um, you know, expressive and vulnerable. I just never allow myself because I've got three younger siblings. I wanted to be strong for them, so I just never, I never never let myself deal with it and it just all came out and it was it was at that point where immediately i felt like the fitness studio was wrong and wasn't for me anymore i just felt like it you know for a long time a lot of my drive came from wanting to be successful for my dad and make him proud and make him love me because I was successful. That's where my energy and my drive came from. And you know, I talk about that switch when he, when, when he had his crash at the start of the podcast. Yeah. It was, it was that, it was that it was like, I want to make my dad proud because I'm not sure if he's proud of me already. Right. That's where my drive came from, from pain. Right. And, um, you know, another thing that Anil said to me, which changed me and which could definitely help. I'm sure someone listening is that, you know, he said to me, he said, Liam, imagine that you've got an eight year old son sitting in front of you right now. You know, what do you want for your son? And I said, I want my son to be happy. And he said, that's what your dad wants for you. And also he said, and do you, do you love that child unconditionally? And I said, of course. And he said, your dad's exactly the same. You don't need to do anything you just be you know he already loves you he's already proud of you it doesn't matter what you do and it it just like was like a huge light bulb and it was like being reborn there's like my life went from black and white uh, black and white to color it, it was like being reborn I, I can't you know when when he allowed me to express i i became a different person overnight i you know i was walking around with a smile on my face people were different with me it was incredible. It was the most incredible experience I've ever had in my life. And it was then I wanted to think, right, I, I, I want to I wanna do something different now. And that's when I decided to sell the studio. And for a year, I, I, uh, I gave talks on forgiveness. After, after selling my studio, I, I went to different places and I, I, I spoke about forgiveness and how powerful it had been in my life and uh, helped other men express forgiveness as well because it was so powerful of mine. And um, I did a year of that and I felt like I'd given back the gift that was given to me. And if anyone who's listening, I'll, I'll send you the link, Michael. I've got the forgiveness meditation that really helped me. So 
if anyone can relate to this, they can go through it as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Um, and yeah, so I did that. And then I decided that I was going to start helping fitness professionals with their businesses and, and, and create and create businesses that work around them similar to what I did. But also inside of that, I do help them with internal stuff as well. Because, you know, if you work, then your business is going to work a lot better. So, yeah, and I, you know, since that, that thing happened in, in Canada, like, you know, that April, I met my partner, Samantha, you know, I've now got a stepson, you know, her son is my stepson now, you know, and now we live in Hertfordshire and we've got chickens and a dog, you know, all that stuff would never have happened if I hadn't have met that guy. So I, I think, you know, I spent $65,000 just to have that 15 minute conversation. And, and would I do it again? 100% because it changed my life. So that's the short version. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love it. Where, where could we go if we wanted to find out a bit more about you and what you've got going on? So obviously you help people that want to run fitness businesses. Where can people go to find out more? Yeah. So the best place to go is two places. My web, if you know, if you're a PT and you're working a lot of hours and you're fed up, basically you've got no time, no freedom, not making enough money you want to do something different then if you go to smartfitbiz.co.uk um biz with a z.co.uk and uh just follow the steps and you can enroll on my 30-day boot camp and i give away all my best knowledge everything i don't do not hold back on that course it's, it's all there for you um and if you just want to connect with me generally then just go to facebook.com slash liam.m.britain and then you'll find me all right, Liam, have you got any resources for us, any books that you recommend for someone that wanted to, to maybe learn a little bit about the, the idea of having a fitness business without all, all the hours that come with that? Um, I'll be honest. From a, that business point of view, like, honestly, my courses are such a great resource. Like, it, it's all there. But if I could advise any books, they wouldn't be business related books. There'd be two books. Like number one, go and get a Neil Gupta's immediate happiness. Like it's a game changer. It keeps it so simple, very, very easy. And it just so many light bulbs go off. And a, a second one that's really helped me, which is a, bit, a little bit out of the box is a, is a book by Louise Hay called you can heal your life. And, uh, that is around the same kind of subject. That's been a massive thing. And I think, you know, if you sometimes, if you want your business to grow, sometimes you've got to have them internal shifts. If you grow, your business grows. That's how I see it. So if, if things are, are stagnated, they're not shifting, then maybe it's time to work on you a little bit. That, that, I just want to put that in there. All right. Well, we've got one last question for you. <clears throat> I ask all my guests this, so we've had, we've had funny answers to slightly funnier answers, all the way to the more serious side. But we don't have to talk about what we've spoken about before. We can you can go a little wild on this one. And it's uh, what would you like the world to know about you that it doesn't already know? Oh, what would I like the world to know about me that they don't know already? Oh, I'm so transparent. I, I say a lot on social media. Um, what don't they know? Um, oh, okay. I'm going to reveal something that I've never revealed before and it's so embarrassing. It's all right. right. Go for it. Um, on, on Father's Day, my stepson got me a teddy bear and I love it. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> no, That's but I, 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 I go to bed every night with it. This, this is no, it, it, it goes in my, like I wear like a pajama top, right? It, it goes in there. It, it, honestly, I've never ever said that in publicly before. And I feel so embarrassed, but yeah, yeah, that's, that, I still sleep with Teddy Bear. That's <laughs> all right. Yeah, we've, 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 we've had, yeah, we've had a few. You're going to tell me you sleep with Teddy Bear as well now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I admit, I, I do know, I do know people that still have things to, uh, they help them sleep so yeah I mean a bird could definitely be one of those maybe they just don't just don't share that well I, I might start a new craze yeah you yeah. know 
You never know. I, I can't I, think of anything else. I'd love to share a few other things. Like that. I can't think of anything else. I'd have to think of like the uh, the man bear or something like. Yeah, something. the oh, that's amazing. The man bear. <laughs> yeah, like the man bag, but the man bear. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you can't sleep with a bag, surely. That's it has to be a line somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being a guest on the show, Liam. I appreciate it, and I'm sure we'll keep in touch. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me.